All right, here is a quick guide on how to set up HCP Boundary inside of your own home environment. So just a quick take, HCP Boundary is a fully managed version of the HashiCorp open source boundary software um, that is offered as a cloud service. And it's a cloud-based solution for secure remote access to infrastructure resources, really that eliminates the need of jump boxes or bastion servers <clears throat> itself. So let's just jump right into it. First thing we're gonna do, if, um, all the code I have here is in my GitHub repo. I'll share that in the links below. Um, but what we're setting up is pretty straightforward. We're gonna use HCP boundary um, to deploy our cluster. So if I log into my cluster right here, I already have HCP boundary deployed and I can access my boundary environment here. And this is how the UI looks like. So what we're gonna deploy in the environment is pretty straightforward. Um, we're gonna deploy vault um, to store our secrets uh, like SSH keys, uh, rotate our Kubernetes clusters, rotate our Postgres database servers, and that's gonna all sit inside of a Docker environment. Um, then we're gonna just deploy a simple uh, Kubernetes cluster using kind. Uh, we're gonna deploy a Postgres database, and we're gonna deploy an SSH server. So what will occur is as a user, when I access the boundary C line of the UI, the first thing to do is I'm gonna get authenticated to the controller. Once I'm authenticated, I'm gonna get a list of the devices that are that I'm allowed to talk to. And then I'll see that list and I'm gonna be able to connect to it. So when I connect to these devices, what's actually going to happen first is that this boundary worker is going to establish a tunnel, a secure tunnel from my home network to the HCP worker inside of um, HCP boundary. So when I connect to my environment, When I make a, a session to, for example, this Docker container, it's gonna be tunneled through this environment. And the way this is gonna work is as I request access to this target, say for example, if I'm targeting this SSH server, my HCP worker is actually gonna make a session to Vault. Vault is going to then inject the SSH key um, inside the payload and then it's going to allow me to connect right into my SSH server um, or right into my Linux server without providing access or without me even having the SSH keys. Once I'm authenticated, I'll get access to this device itself. So let's take a look and see how um, this all is deployed. So if we open up visual code in here, first thing I'm going to do is go to my GitHub repo Bigger. I'm gonna get clone. Oops, I copied the wrong one. Let's go clear. Get clone. <clears throat> then I'm gonna get into my directory in here. The first thing I'm gonna do is configure my controller. So in, in this instance, to get this controller ID, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to log into your uh, HCP boundary. Um, you're going to click on this URL to log in. So this is the URL to log in. Um, once you're authenticated, you'll see your set of predefined workers already deployed. You can copy one of these worker URLs. Then we go back to our code and we're going to update that right here. So this is the HCP worker I'm going to connect to. I'm gonna save this configuration. 
Once we save this configuration, we could see inside of the Docker environment, we're spinning up a couple deployments. We have the HCP worker, we have vault, we have OpenSSH server. So we're going to log into this Docker compose up dash D. So this is going to go ahead and configure um, what we require, what we need itself. So once this is online, um, we'll be able to see all our images being deployed. So I'm just gonna use this. And we can see that we have boundary deployed, vault deployed. And when we take a look at our Docker environment, um, I have my vault and my HCP boundary. So first thing we need to do is we are going to have to register this boundary worker to HCP um, boundary. So we're gonna copy this token right here. And we're gonna switch back to our visual code. And all the instructions are here so we could kind of follow this itself. Um, so next thing we need to do is we need to export that worker. Export worker token. I'm gonna paste that in there. Then we need to export the boundary address. So that is our URL when we deploy our cluster. So this is mine. Once we do that, we need to authenticate. So I already have, we're gonna to authenticate to boundary. I'm gonna provide my username and my password. So now that I'm authenticated, I need to execute the following command to generate the creation or to authorize this worker to be able to talk to my HCP boundary in the cloud. So I'm gonna configure that and I've everything got set. So when I log back into my Chrome browser and I refresh the page here, you'll be able to see that, okay, great, my HCP worker inside my home lab is configured. Um, it's using a specific tag that I've configured just called Docker Lab. And, you know, it's, it's online, it's working, perfect. So next step, what we're gonna do, we can just follow this guide, is we're going to uh, start the script. So the following script is gonna really build what I um, recently talked about. Um, it's going to um, build build all the information, all the configurations that I need um, for this uh, Kubernetes cluster, the database, the SSH configuration. It's going to build all the vault policies required for me uh, in this environment. So I built a, a simple script that you can just start. Um, the one thing you need to know, um, this is just using your external IP address. So if you do um, use this, make sure you find your local IP address um, of your machine. So mine is 192.168.86.250 and just export that right here. So I'm gonna chmod my start script and I'm just going to click on start. So like I mentioned, this is going to deploy that kind or deploy a Kubernetes cluster using kind, which is quick and simple. Once it deploys this, it will build out um, the specific policies that are required for um, Vault to be able to talk to boundary, for Vault to be able to do secret rotations uh, in the Postgres database, for Vault to be able to inject the SSH keys in here. So now that we the script is done and it's complete, when we take a look um, at our actual organization or our configuration in here, we'll see that we have a new Docker Lab organization deployed. Inside this Docker Lab, we have Kubernetes, a database server, and a Postgres server. And inside of these, we have specific targets like our Kubernetes cluster, um, our Linux servers, 
or our database itself. <clears throat> and for all these projects, we have a specific credential store, one for Kubernetes Secrets Engine. So if we log into our environment, and you can find the root key inside the config, when we log into Vault as our secrets tool, we can see that uh, Kubernetes Secrets Engine was deployed and configured. Uh, we can see our Kubernetes secret cluster, so the cert is inside in here. And we can see for our Linux servers, the application secrets um, are located in here itself. So the first thing we need to do is let's kind of test this out. Um, let's open up the Boundary UI. So this is the Boundary UI. Um, and what I'm going to do is just going to log out and just show it to you how it works. Um, you can log into specific organizations. So I'm just going to log in as global user in here. <clears throat> and then I have a list of all my targets in my environment. I'm just going to specify my Docker lab. And in here I have those three components. So I can connect to a Linux server. I can proxy this. So now I can SSH to this IP address. Um, if I want to connect to the Kubernetes cluster, I can click on connect and right away Vault dynamically brokers the connection, so it generates the, the specific namespace I wanted, um, the specific uh, service account, and the specific token for me to log into. Or if I want to connect to a Postgres database, the same thing happens that Vault brokers that information and generates a username and password for me itself. Um, when I want to interact from the CLI perspective, if we go back to our visual code in here. So I'm already authenticated to Boundary. So I can simply just go Boundary Connect. If I want to SSH, target name. And the target name that we have in here is our Linux server. So Linux server. And this target belongs to the scope of uh, Docker servers. So when we connect to here right away, it didn't prompt me for a username or password. It injected the SSH credentials and logged me into my Windows server or my SSH server. I'm gonna exit out of here. And the next thing I wanna do is connect maybe to that Postgres database that I in here. So we're almost gonna do the same type of uh, configuration where we're going to do boundary, connect, Postgres, target name, and we called it Postgres DB, and then target scope name is Docker DB. And then I'm going to actually specify the database name because I want to connect to a specific database. So database it's called database. Um, oh, I probably got the target name wrong. I spelt that wrong. That's all right. So let's go back into target name, Postgres. And right, what's happening here is that boundary with the vault integration was able to rotate and dynamically generate credentials for me for me to log into the specific database I wanted to. And finally, the last thing to be able to test out is Kube uh, connecting to a Kubernetes cluster. So for this, I, I really wanna be able to just execute some type of command inside of Kubernetes. So as you can see, I can do Kube and same thing, target name. And we just called it Kubernetes or KS. And then target scope name, which is just the project that this is in. And it's in the Docker's Kubernetes project. And then I'm actually gonna execute a command. I, I want it to automatically authenticate me because it boundary already did. And I just want it to grab the username and password or the token um, and the account from uh, vault and execute my command. So pretty simple, get pod dash a, 
Oops. I must have spelt oh, Docker. There we go. That's the issue right here. Docker Kubernetes. So what happened here was it connected to Vault. Vault dynamically generated us the credentials that we needed. So we got the service name and the token and it was able to output the command that I wanted in here to be able to see my Kubernetes cluster and then therefore really manage it itself. So um, this is really just a, a quick demo um, user guide on how to deploy this. If you want to um, destroy this environment, like I mentioned, this is built inside of Docker. It is simply destroy or chmodx. And this will destroy the environment itself. Awesome. Have fun playing around with this. Let me know if uh, you see any issues or if you want me to add some more features.